Hi, Michelle from Birdcage and Thread here with another tutorial and this time it's the Betty Bowler Bag by Swoon Patterns and I'll put a link to the pattern in the description box below. Also in the description box I'll put timestamps so you can click directly to the section of the pattern you want to see. But it's a great little bag, it'll be perfect for overnight stays and it's got four exterior slip pockets And it's fully lined and it also has another zip pocket inside as well. So it's a great little bag and a fun little sew. So I hope you join me. So get your supplies and we'll get started. Now I have all my fabric cut out, my exterior, the lining and the contrast. And I also have the woven interfacing cut, the flex foam cut and the stabiliser cut and I also have the other supplies listed in the pattern. Just as a tip, if you're working with directional fabric, just pay attention to the direction of your fabric when you're placing your pattern piece down to cut out. Just make sure it's all going the one way. Also what I did with this fabric was I cut out one piece of the main panel of my exterior fabric, then I placed that over the fabric to cut out a second but what I did was line up the fabric and as you can see I have two identical panels. That's more obvious if you have a bigger overall design on your fabric. It's not so critical for a smaller design. But just as a tip, um, you can have two identical panels that will match nicely on the outside of your bag. So let's get started. So the first step to making the Betty Bowler bag is to take the two exterior main panels and fuse the interfacing to the wrong side of both of those panels. Then take the bottom exterior panel and the bottom support stabiliser and find the centre of all the long ends of both of those pieces and then line the centres up and fuse the stabiliser to the wrong side of the exterior bottom panel. So now it's time to work on the top panel foam pieces. So take one of the pieces and with a wide zigzag stitch, stitch along this long straight edge of the foam. Then repeat that with the second piece. Once you have two pieces with a zigzag stitch along the long straight edge, Take one of your top exterior panel pieces and place it wrong side up. Then place the foam over the top of that, lining up the short edges and the long curved edge. Pin that in place, then with a quarter inch seam and a long basting stitch, stitch along those three edges along there. Then repeat that with the second piece of foam. So you'll have two pieces looking like this. So now we have the foam sewn to the exterior top panel, both of those, so we'll put those aside. Then we take the foam outer piece or the main panel foam piece and place that to the wrong side of the main panel piece. Then pin around the edge Then using a quarter inch seam, baste the foam to the main panel's exterior. Um, but make sure you sew the, the foam to the wrong side of the main panel. So make sure you do that for both of them. And then with the bottom panel, we again place the foam to the wrong side of the bottom panel, pin and then sew quarter inch seam all the way around. So each of the outer exterior panels have foam basted to it. The next step is to fuse the woven interfacing to the wrong side of the exterior top panels. So you just place the interfacing over the whole thing and fuse it together. Then you fuse the woven interfacing to the rest of the lining pieces. 
Now the only pieces that don't have woven interfacing are the pull tabs, the four lining pockets and the bottom panel exterior. So now we're going to be working on the slip pockets. So you need to cut four lengths of piping according to the measurement in the pattern. Then you need to remove stitches from the cording or the piping from both ends. It's usually with this pre-made piping it's usually only a couple of stitches. So just take those out. Fold the fabric back and trim half an inch off the cord. Repeat that with the other end. Trim half an inch. Be careful not to cut the fabric of the piping. So repeat that for all four pieces. Then you line up the raw edge of the piping to the raw curved edge of the pocket pieces and pin that in place and then stitch over the previous line of stitching on the cord itself. So use your uh, zipper foot for that so you can get nice and close to that cord there. So now the binding is sewn to each of the curved edges of the contrast pocket we're going to attach the lining piece to each of the pockets. So take a contrast look piece and a lining piece uh, that are mirror imaged and place them side by side. Then take the contrast piece with the binding on it and flip it over like so. Then line up the curved edges and then pin it in place like that. Then sew over the top of that existing stitching line that you made previously. Once you've done that, you press each of the pieces outwards away from the piping. And then you open it out and press again, like this. And then top stitch on the fabric about an eighth of an inch away from the seam and do that for all four pockets. Now that you have all the four pockets sewn, take two of them that are mirror imaged and place them right side up with the lining facing down on the exterior main panel. Then place them in each of the curved corners like that and pin on the raw edges of the pocket. So repeat that for the other side and then using a quarter inch seam based along those raw edges of both the pockets. Then repeat the same for the second exterior main panel. You can see the stitching line here. So now we're going to work on the handle connectors. So take one of the connectors and fold it in half lengthwise and press with your iron. Open that fold out and then press one long edge in to meet that centre crease that you just made with the iron. Then repeat that for the other edge so you have both long raw edges going to the centre. Then fold that in half and give it a press. Open that out and cut that in half and repeat the same with the other handle connector. So you'll end up with four pieces that look like this. Then take one short end, it doesn't matter which end, and fold over one inch. Then take your rectangular ring and slide that under there like that. Then sew a stitch across here, so a line of stitching across here, as close as you can to the rectangle. Um, you probably find it best to use your zipper foot to get nice and close to the ring. And then you'll end up 
with something that looks like this. You can see the line of stitching across there. Then repeat that so that you end up with four of these connectors. Now we're going to attach the handle connectors to the main panel exterior. So start by finding the centre of the exterior panel and draw a line down the centre with a removable marker. Then draw another line to the left of that parallel to that centre line two and a half inches away and from the bottom up it will be nine and a half inches long. Then draw another one on the other side again two and a half inches to the right of the centre line and from the bottom up it should be nine and a half inches. Then take the handle connector and place some glue on the back. Then place the handle connector covering that raw edge and lining up this bottom edge and press down and line up the fold with that line you just made, that nine and a half inch long line. And tuck those raw ends under. Then repeat the same with the other handle connector, this time lining the handle connector up on this side of the line and then sew about an eighth of an inch away from the fold up over that existing stitching line and back down the other fold. Then repeat that for the other side then also repeat that for the other exterior main panel. So now we have the handle connectors sewn to each of the main exterior panels. We're going to add the piping to each of the main exterior panels. So when you pin the piping all the way around, begin at the center bottom here and pin the piping half an inch away from the raw edge. And when I say half an inch, that's half an inch from the raw edge to the stitching line of the piping there. So pin that all the way around, then stitch along that piping line or the stitch line of the existing piping stitch all the way around and overlap the ends and bring them down like that and then continue your stitching over where the piping overlaps. Then repeat the same for the other exterior main panel. Okay now we should have the piping sewn to the exterior edges of both main panels. Then we repeat the process to place the piping on either end of the exterior bottom panel and again making sure that the stitch line of the piping is half an inch away from the raw edge of the exterior bottom panel. Then sew both those in place over the existing stitching of the piping. Now we take the two exterior top panels and place them right sides together and pin along the straight edge here. Then mark one inch in from either short end and with a one inch seam allowance start with your regular stitch length and sew along until you get to the one inch mark. Then switch your stitch length to a longer basting stitch and keep going along until you get to the other one inch mark at the other end. Then reset your stitch length to regular and finish off that seam. Just remember when you're sewing this seam along here to backstitch at the beginning as you normally would but also backstitch again just before the one inch mark. Then continue along with a regular basting stitch. Then also backstitch just after the one inch mark and then backstitch as you would at the end. So open the both top panels so that the wrong side is facing up. Then press the seam allowances open flat like that. Then using either glue or pins, baste the zipper down on top of the panels here. 
but so place the zipper right side down or teeth side down and center the teeth along the seam line there so you can do little bit by little bit so that you're making sure that you're lining up the zipper teeth with that seam there and continue gluing or pinning until you get to the end then flip the whole thing over and using a zipper foot top stitch along both sides of the seam a quarter inch away from this center seam here so make sure you do both sides then using a seam ripper remove your basting stitches that were in between the inch on either end just be careful that you don't cut into your back stitch then once you've done that repeat as you did to sew the two exterior panels together repeat the same process for the lining panels remembering to back stitch at the beginning just before the one inch mark then set to a basting, long basting stitch continue along until you get to the other one inch mark then set to a regular stitch length back stitch a little way and then back stitch at the end then you press the seam allowances open and do just as you did before open up the basting stitches so now we're going to be making the zippered pocket so take the lining main panel and turn it so that the wrong side is facing up then fold it in half wrong sides together and finger press that crease in place open it back out I'll just mark it with the pin where that center crease was it's a little bit hard to see then you're going to be drawing a rectangle 9 inches across by half an inch high so what I've done, I've just made a little template and I folded that in half and then I can just line up the centers so the position of this needs to be in the center and eight and a half inches up from this bottom section there so I'll just mark that with a dot with a removable marker and the same on the other end so keeping my center centered I'll move my template in place you can certainly draw this by hand but I'll just mark each corner or you could just trace and then join the dots or you could just trace around the template whatever works for you is fine so you should have something that looks like that now we're going to flip the piece over and we're going to take the um, lining main pan, uh, pocket panel and we're going to place that over the rectangle on the other side now we can't see it but if you can center the find the center of the pocket panel line that up with the center of the lining It should extend from the bottom should extend to about maybe uh, 10 inches so it just needs to come down a little bit so I'll measure still needs to come down a little bit more
got 10 inches that side. And 10 inches that side. Then pin that in place. I'll just use these pins now that I've got all that in place. Flip it back over and then you're going to sew on that rectangle line here. Now the rectangle has been sewn, we're going to draw some lines inside the rectangle. So take your ruler and in the centre of that rectangle, so I have my ruler a quarter inch up because the rectangle is half an inch high. So what I'm going to do is draw a line half an inch in from the rectangle either end. So, and stopping half an inch from the other end. Then draw a line from the centre out to the corner. Like that. And repeat for the other end. Then take your sharp scissors and cut on those black lines, so all along there and that V-shape line either end. Just be careful not to clip into the stitches in the corner. So you can see I've cut through all the layers. That's what it looks like from the front and that's the back. So now we take the pocket panel and pull that through to the other side of the lining panel and that little top section as well. So now you should have a little opening where the zipper is going to be. So take that to your iron and give, it a, give the seam a good press and then we'll come back and stitch the zipper in place. So now you've pressed the edges of the zipper panel here, the zipper pocket, you should have something that looks like this and that's the view from the back. So flip it over so that the lining is facing up and place the zipper with the zipper pull facing towards the teeth. Place the lining over the top like that. Then you can either pin, glue or scotch tape the zipper to the lining panel and then with a quarter inch seam sew all the way around the rectangle so that the zipper gets sewn to the lining panel and the pocket panel. So now you've sewn around the rectangle to secure the zipper. We're going to make the pocket. So flip the lining panel so it's right side facing down and you've got the right side of the pocket facing you. Then take the free short end and bring that up to meet the other. Then if you flip it, hold it in place and flip it back over so the lining is facing up. Then just bunch all the lining into the centre. Making sure that the two short ends meet. And then pin around the three raw edges of the pocket. I'll just quickly pin this side in place. You can pin all these out the way or just hold it. Whatever works for you. Just tuck all the, the ends in. And then you're going to sew with a half inch seam allowance around the three raw edges of the pocket. Just be careful not to catch any of the lining in your stitching. Once you've sewn the half inch seam allowance and then uh, trim the seam allowance down to a quarter of an inch. Now that the zipper pocket is done, we're going to make pull tabs and attach those to the exterior top panels. 
So you'll have two pull tabs measuring two inches by three inches. So take the three inch edge and fold it to meet the other one so it's in half. Then press that fold with your iron. Open that back out and then fold each three inch piece, three inch edge into the center like that. Then refold that center crease, then top stitch along these three inch edges here, about an eighth of an inch in from each edge. So you can see I've top stitched down here. Then fold that in half so that the short raw edges are meeting. Now we're going to attach it to the exterior top panel. And you can see I've trimmed the zipper off this end. And so take the uh, pull tab, line up the raw edges and placing it over the centre seam here, centering it over the seam, sorry. And with a quarter inch seam, stitch that pull tab to those top panels. Now we're going to repeat the same process on the other side, except you can see that I can't open the zipper pull. I can't open the zipper because the zipper pull gets caught because of this one inch seam here. But that's okay, and I can't cut it off because I will lose my zipper pull. But you can still open your zipper. If you open it as far as you can, then holding the zipper pull away from the panel, just push it down between the fabric and the, the zipper there. And just use your finger to guide it and then it'll pop out the other side. So move that out of the way. Then you can attach the second zipper pull, the same as what you did on the other end. And once you've sewn that seam, that's when you can trim the zipper, the excess zipper there. So now we're going to start assembling the bag. So first of all we take the top exterior panel and the bottom exterior panel and place them right sides together. Then match up the short ends. And pin them in place. Then repeat with the other short end, matching up the raw edges and pinning those in place. Then with a quarter inch seam allowance, sew both of those short ends. So now you've sewn the two short ends of the top panel and the bottom panel's exterior. Press the seam allowance towards the bottom panel and top stitch about an eighth of an inch from the piping on the bottom panel. Then we're going to repeat the same thing with the lining. So the top panel lining and the bottom panel lining. Place them right sides together. Match up the short ends. So I've matched up both short ends there, but this time instead of a half inch seam allowance you're going to use a three quarter inch seam allowance. Then once again press the seam towards seam allowance towards the bottom panel and top stitch on the bottom panel about an eighth of an inch away from the seam. So now take your gusset and one main ex exterior panel. Then fold the exterior panel in half to find the centre top and the centre bottom. Then take the gusset, the exterior gusset, and again fold that in half, matching the piping there, and find the centre top and the centre bottom. Then with right sides together, pin the gusset 
to the main lining panel at the top, starting at the top. But you'll probably want to pin from this side because you'll be sewing about a sixteenth of an inch away from that original sewing line there. So again match up the top centre, pin that in place and then match up the bottom centre. Both bottom centres there and pin that in place. Then starting at the top, pin about every inch or so going down one side and then across the bottom and you ease the fabric in as you go and keep going all the way around until you get to the bottom and then repeat on the other side going down from the top around to the bottom then as I said before, follow that stitching line but about a sixteenth of an inch in from that original stitching line. But it should be half an inch from the raw edge. So this is what you should have now when you've sewn the outer main panel to the outer gusset. Then you repeat the same process, that is to find the centres of the outer main panel by folding it in half then before you pin it together, pin the outer to the gusset, make sure that your zipper is open. Then once again pin the centres at the top and the bottom and then work your way around the outside and sew with half inch seam allowance. Just about a sixteenth of an inch away from that previous stitching line where you stitched your piping to the bag and then repeat the same process as in sew the main panel to the gusset except with your lining and making sure when you're sewing the lining that you sew at a three quarter inch seam allowance. Now that you have your exterior pieces sewn together and also the lining pieces sewn together place the lining wrong side out inside the exterior like so then pin or clip this lining piece to the, the exterior bag and when you do just extend the lining just past the zipper teeth so that the zipper doesn't catch in the lining you can see the lining just peeking over the zipper teeth and when you, you, once you've done both sides, take it to your sewing machine and then possibly if you've got a free arm that would make things a little easier if you sew on the existing stitching line on the zipper there to secure that in place. And then you can secure the, the ends of the zipper just with a little bit of hand stitching across there just to keep that secure there. So now the lining has been attached to the exterior of the bag, the last step in construction is to make the handles and attach them to the bag. So take one of your handles and place it wrong side up on your ironing board. Then take one of the long edges and fold it to meet the other one so it's folded in half. Then press that with your iron. Open out that fold and then with the one long edge fold that into the centre crease like so. Then repeat on the other side so that that other long edge gets folded to the centre crease. Then refold your centre crease to form the handle. Then repeat that for the second handle. Now top stitch along both edges of the handle about an eighth of an inch away from the edge 
and repeat that for the second handle. Now we attach both the handles to the bag and start by taking one of the short ends and fold over half an inch then fold over three quarters of an inch. Then making sure that the folds are underneath you slide the handle up under the ring so it goes between the, the two folds there. And sew across where that fold is. Now making sure, then repeat the same for the other end, but just make sure that there's no twists in your handle. So I need to fold this under. So fold it up just as you did before, half an inch and then three quarters of an inch. Then slide that between the fold. And once again stitch across the fold there. Then repeat that for the other side of the bag and then your Betty Bowler is complete. So thanks very much for watching this tutorial.